we will uh, continue to discuss the cathodic protection method for the control of corrosion. We saw earlier that in a corroding metal which are exposed to a uh, environment, suppose you have an environment the metal is getting oxidized electron this is the metal and they release the electrons on the surface. There is a cathodic reaction and uh, which takes away these electrons. So, these electrons will flow and there can be some species in oxidizing species which would accept these electrons they become reduced. So, in this case the rate of oxidation equals the rate of reduction. the potential exhibited by the metal is equal to what? The metal is equals to the E car or the corrosion potential. Now, if you are going to uh, supply electrons to this surface, if you are going to supply electrons to the surface, if you are going to supply electrons to the surface, then what will happen? In that case, the reduction reaction rate rate incre increases, right? The oxidation rate. decreases. So, there is this uh, simple leach atelier principle and that is how the cathodic protection works. Now, we need to understand this uh, more in detail about what are the factors that control or that are required in cathodic protection of a given metal. This we can understand by looking at the Evans diagram, right. We know how the Evans diagram is uh, you know can be constructed, right. So, let us construct the Evans diagram. I think all of you could, could do that, right. And uh, you can do the, you can draw an Evans diagram. What is the Evans diagram here? You have so log i versus the potential right and how do I get E car? So, you you represent the uh, the the cathodic reaction ok starting from its equilibrium potential somewhere here and reduction reaction and you also have somewhere you are in oxidation reaction. So, this this metal um, n plus plus n electrons right and this corresponds to what? This corresponds to oxidizing species accepting the electrons and getting reduced. And what is the car? It is this the intersection point you guys know and this is your corresponding I car.
So, what you are doing actually you are forcing electron onto the metal surface. How can you do that? By making the metal surface negative right. So, you are going to make the metal surface is negative. That means, you are polarizing the metal negative to the corrosion potential am I right. So, you are you are moving from from down from here you have to you have to move down right. So, you have to bring down the potential from this point to this point what is this this is the called as the equilibrium potential for what for the metal equilibrium and this is the equilibrium potential for your oxidants and reductant got it. Now, I have to move in order to reduce the current corrosion rate I need to move from here to this point by applying an external voltage apply an external voltage I do this. Ideally the metal stops corroding when if I reach this particular potentials. At this particular potential the metal becomes totally immune to corrosion. If I have to make it immune to corrosion, I need to supply the current. Do I need to supply current? See, at this point at E car, I do not supply any current. Agreed? But when I move here, the rate of reduction reaction is higher than the rate of oxidation reaction. That means, the remaining current has to come from an external source agreed. So, this is the current that is to be applied. So, this is the current this is I applied to completely protect the A steel or metal, I can put any of them actually, okay. Structures. So, this is the difference in current, right? The cathodic current minus anodic current gives you the net current I have to apply externally to bring the potential from this point to this point. So, that is the principle of cathodic protection. How do I apply the current? I apply the current what should be then the case if you have a metal if you want to bring down the potentials right and I need to have anode and this is going to be your cathode. What kind of current I apply? Is it AC current or DC current? DC current, okay. So, apply DC current, okay. So, this is a on the negative terminal, this is the positive terminal, and this is what? This is a can be a rectifier can be rectifier if you want, you can call it as a rectifier. What happening now? What is the uh, direction of the flow of current? The direction of the flow of current is opposite to the direction of the flow of electrons. Now, this anode, now current flows like that.
systems agreed. So, the rectifier now provides the current to the anode and the anode sends the current to what to the to the medium. The medium could be uh, a soil or any electrolyte in general may be sea water. So, the purpose of the anode here is to send current in the electrolyte which corrodes this is the metal structure and the role of rectifier is to provide the current to provide the voltage. Now, what should be the voltage in this case? The voltage in this case as for the theory is it is equal to the equilibrium potential of the structure. So, we will see that whether that is should be you should do it or not we will see later. Now, this is one form of cathode protection. So, this is called as the impressed current cathode protection because you are using an external source rectifier and the role of anode is only to supply current to the soil and from the soil or from the electrolyte the current enters the cathode or the steel and renders this metal into a cathode. That is what it does ok. So, that means, electrons start flowing like that right. Electrons flow here the current starts flowing in this direction. Agreed? So, this is called as uh, impressed current and uh, or uh, impressed current cathodic protection system. You can also have you know the galvanic series right you have seen it before or you have seen I, I, I have given you a table before there is a series or you have a EMF series. If you look at that series the corrosion potential of the metals and alloys are given in some order. That is in the table you will see that the potential the corrosion potential decreases from the top to the bottom. Top most is platinum and the bottom most given there is the magnesium there. Suppose you take the case of steel and just take the case of let us say zinc. You take this case right which is relatively noble steel. The steel is noble and zinc is active. right. If I can short steel and, and zinc, I short them up here. The potential of the galvanic potential of uh, zinc is uh, normally considered as minus 1.1 volt and the corrosion potential of steel in in uh, you know in sea water is considered as something like minus 0 0.6 volts with respect to saturated calomel electrode. This is uh, relatively noble and is relatively active. 
So, what will happen now? Zinc will dissolve as zinc ions, the electrons will start flowing and enter this steel like this. Of course, go like this only ok. The current will start I mean the current moves in directions the negative ion starts moving in the direction. So, to put it in this way zinc dissolves as zinc 2 plus plus 2 electrons and these electrons are available for cathodic protection. What is the driving force for that? The driving force for this is you can consider E cell is the driving force is equal to what is equal to minus 0 0.6 volts minus of minus 1.1 volt. So, what is the value 0 0.5 volt approximately. So, you have that much driving voltage for the system to sustain. So, zinc is able to provide you a driving force so that the steel can become cathode, is made as a cathode, and this process is called as. So, you have two types of cathodic protection system, one is called impressed current cathodic protection, the other case is sacrificial anode cathodic protection system. Let us look at this cathodic protection a little bit more uh, in depth to try to understand this. Let us go back to this diagram. When you do a cathodic protection of, uh, of the structure, no doubt there is a reduction in the coercion rate, but what is happening to the, to the cathodic reaction rate? It increases right. The cathodic production uh, the cathodic um, reduction reaction rate is increasing. Assume that this cathodic reaction is let us say H plus plus electron gives you hydrogen right. assume that the cathodic reaction is this one. So, what will happen now? Lots of hydrogen gas will evolve on the metal surface and it can lead to hydrogen embrittlement, we will see later and right now we are not talking about it. If you apply a coating, the coating will get damaged because of the gas evolution. So, it is not a right thing to do that you can apply as much of voltage as possible. You apply a very high voltage from here to this, the chances of hydrogen evolution rate is very high. So, in practice, we do not normally keep this the, the cathode protection potential at or is equal to the equilibrium potentials. So, it is kept in a way that it is more practical and more appropriate from engineering perspective of this actually. So, that becomes a criteria for cathodic protection understood. So, from otherwise ideally speaking you can make the metal immune to corrosion by bringing the uh, potential from E car down to equilibrium potentials. The disadvantage is that the hidden evolution will take place and the metal may become embedded if you have a coating the coating also get disbonded. So, in practice you do not do that. So, what we do in actual is 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 as follows. So, you come out with a criteria which is called as cathodic protection criteria. The idea here is that if I can reduce the corrosion rate by 10 times, 
the life of the structure increases by 10 times right. Assume that without a cathodic protection the steel corrodes, steel corrodes in a soil at at uh, let us say at a rate uh, equals to let us say about 20 MPY. right. So, you can design the structure right. Suppose, I want a pipeline for example, I have a pipeline. I can design the thickness based on the pressure and all right. If you can bring down the corrosion rate to 2 MPY, assume that with this I have about 5 years is the life. If you bring down the corrosion rate from 20 to 2 MPY, it becomes 2 PS. So, I am not completely stopping corrosion, but it is ok from the point of view of engineering applications. So, the criteria of corrosion or the criteria of cathodic protection is based on that particular concept. So, the following criteria is is uh, is generally used it is it is actually called minus 0 0.85 volts with respect to copper saturated copper sulphate electrode. very widely used criteria it has some limitations we will not discuss now actually ok. But let us just take it as as a normally used criteria for the cathodic protection. That means, when after applying cathodic protection I should get a potential which is equal to minus 0 0.85 volt with respect to copper saturated copper sulphate electrode. This is a reference electrode that is understood as is adequate protection to serve the required life of the particular pipeline. And here you minimize the uh, the the hydrogen evolution, you minimize the hydrogen damage all is done. In fact, if people are going to use high strength steels you know in the case of uh, ship and all in fact, they do not even go this much it's slightly make it a little more anodic because in sea water if you make it more negative the hydrogen evolution occurs the then there will be cracking taking place. So, there are some variations within this defined criteria based on the applications, but most of the pipeline application this criteria is is followed. Now, let us look at the the difference between the press current cathodic protection system, the sacrificial anode cathodic protection system. What are the uh, what are the advantages and disadvantages of each of the systems? And I think we can we can look at it. Two systems. Bottom, sir, minus 0 0.85 volt. So, even if the soil is changing whether it is aerobic, anaerobic, the criteria remains same, it is a generalized criteria. Yeah, yeah, whether the soil is aerobic or anaerobic, the criteria is almost the same. The only difference that happens is that if the soil has got a microbial corrosion, then you add another 100 millivolts, you becomes uh, minus uh, 950 millivolts. And where the problem uh, is is uncertain, for example, see what happens since you you know started that I can I can clarify. In some cases, the corrosion potential itself is equal to minus 0.85. You measure with respect to the 
copper copper sulfate ok. So, then the people use a criteria called as 100 millivolt criteria. What you do is when I apply a cathode protection the potential drops you know assume that it is minus 0.85 it may go to minus 0.95 volts right. You turn it off you know and when you turn it off then there is a shift from the protected potentials to the unprotected potentials ok. And that if it is 100 millivolt difference then we consider that the pipeline is or tank is well protected. Now, the criteria is very simple you know the Tafel equation right. What does the Tafel equation say? All of us know that eta is equal to what? Eta is equal to uh, let us say in the case of uh, uh, anodic thing beta log i upon i naught or you can say i car whatever you can call it ok. You can call i car here. What is eta here? The eta is equal to E applied minus E car. Now, if you substitute here 100 millivolts is not it? If you substitute here 100 millivolts, assume that the top slope is, is about 100 millivolts ok. Then what happens? This ratio becomes 1. You can see here now, assume that the beta is uh, 100 millivolt and the shift is 100 millivolt right is not it the eta is equal to shift is 100 millivolt right. So, if shift is eta is equal to 100 millivolts and beta is assumed as 100 millivolts then what happens then you find log i upon i car is equal to 1 that means from from this this you moved ok. How much you moved? You moved about 10 times. Am I right or not? So, that is how you can able to you can able to see that 100 millivolt criteria means it is it is about 10 times you are lowering the corrosion rate of the metal. If you make it let us say 300 millivolt it will be 1000 times you are reducing the corrosion rate provided the travel slope is equal to 100 millivolt of course, that is the assumption that you are making it actually ok. So, there are other criteria people use it and we are not discussing right now you will just you know if you take the other course advances in design and control of corrosion there will be detailed discussion on the cathode protection engineering you will see the merit and demerits of various criteria. It is not that this criteria is is, is uh, ideal criteria for that for simplicity it is ok to understand that minus 0.85 volt with respect to copper copper sulphate is normally used across uh, the various uh, uh, various uh, you know uh, structures and soils and so on ok. But yes there are issues which I think should be taken care of ok yeah. Um, yeah let us go into uh, the comparison. Um, look at ICCP impressed current cathodic protection system. You also have sacrificial anode cathodic protection system. It is first of all it is a, a complex system. you need a rectifier and a system like monitoring them. In practice it is a very very complicated feedback systems are there, it is very complex and it is it is cost high. This is simple cost low. I am talking 
in relation to that each other right. This is for long term, you want to apply a long term cathode ray protection, like I said 20 years, 25 years, like that, the people go for ICCP. This is for short term application. The third is a very important criteria. If you talk about a pipeline lying in a very highly resistant soil, right? Soil has got resistance. If the soil has got high resistance, I need a driving force has to be higher in order to pass the current from the anode into the soil and then onto the pipeline, right? So, it requires higher driving voltage. If the soil is low resistance, I have less problems. So, high resistance soil, I can use this. Soil, okay, can be applied. A rectifier can give you 50 volts, right, 20 volts. I mean, there is no restriction as it is in terms of capacity, right, because of high driving force, driving voltage availability. Okay. Can be used only in the low resistant Soils not possible always. Four anodes generally are stable. Hmm? Are stable. They are like uh, they are like let's say uh, graphite. iron silicon, platinum, titanium, insoluble anodes. These anodes are sacrificial anodes. They are like zinc, magnesium, and these alloys. They have aluminum. Aluminum only in sea water applications. Aluminum forms a passive film, right? So it can't be used everywhere. Okay, aluminum and aluminum alloys. People use actually aluminum. Uh, people use aluminum zinc indium system, aluminum zinc tin systems, these are the alloys they use for sacrificial anodes. There are more differences uh, we will not be discussing about. Uh, for example, um, there is something called interference current, stray current corrosion all they are in ICCP, but they are not there in the, they are not there in the uh, in the sacrificial anode cathode protection system, but I think we will we'll not uh, discuss those into into details of that. One thing I just want to say here because it is not out of place to talk about is that cathodic protection and coatings. And, and paint coatings, I put it more specific paint coatings are complementary to 
help each other right. You apply coating for what to reduce corrosion, you apply um, you apply cathodic protection to reduce corrosion, the why you should have coating as well as cathodic protection. The second one is more correct. You you do not find any paint coatings which is 100 percent impervious to water, you know. There are certain defects in the system. So, coatings, yeah, they do protect, but they are not going to protect completely, first of all. First reason that oh, it is going to aid the coating in preventing corrosion to a large extent, ok. So, the reason is the coatings are generally or defective. The second important point, the current requirement for cathodic protection is significantly brought down. You would not believe you know from amperes you can bring down to milliampere about 1000 times and even more you can bring down the current requirement. So, coatings lower the current required for cathodic protection. I think we can keep discussing more and more I think um, because uh, in engineering you know it is you know what you saw is only the science of it right. The engineering is is complex. If you want to install a cathodic protection then you have to define how much current is required, how many anodes are required, how to distribute them, what is the what is the rate capacity of the rectifier. Several issues are there, so that is we call it engineering. That is not discussed now, ok. And uh, those who are interested, you can look at the book, huh? yeah. Can we conjugate the um, cathodic protection by sacrificial anode into the paints? Yeah, see, I mean, um, yeah, I mean, that is not called as a cathodic protection. In the paints also uh, you add uh, zinc as a pigment, zinc powders, zinc flakes are added as a pigments and uh, the, the zinc uh, you know when they sit on the steel surface, it can cathodically protect the structure you know this is what right. You, you it's a good question now for example, suppose I have a pipeline and I apply a paint on this, sorry this is the paint and in the paint if I am going to add uh, you know zinc particles sufficient quantities ok. Now, what happens now? The paint is we saw in the morning that it is a barrier, it, it does not allow the water to permeate just like that, it is a barrier. But nevertheless, uh, the water will permeate. The corrosive species like chloride, sulfate may permeate. Over a time period, the water will ingress here. The second level of defense, the first level of defense against corrosion here is the barrier by the paint, the physical barrier. The second level of defense is that, ok, if the water comes over here, the zinc now will act as a sacrificial thing. So, it is a mini cathodic protection system right is not it at a micro level they are operating. So, the life of the paint coating is increased significantly because of the presence of zinc 
in the in the, in the paint and uh, they they call as um, these these paints are called as zinc rich organic paints now the issue is um, you should have enough zinc powder so that all the zinc powder should be touching each other right otherwise if the zinc powder is not sufficient and then the cathode protection may not be operating so there are critical amount of zinc powder like 80% is added so that this zinc is uh, effective cathode protection here we don't call a cathode protection in true sense of it okay but the principle of cathode protection is very much applied here and of course is a conjugate with the physical barrier offered by the paint system yeah it is it's a uh, that's what it, it does work so it's you it, it use the same concept to develop a new paint okay any any questions any of you okay let us go into the into the next uh, uh, aspect of uh, the uh, the 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 controlling the uniform corrosion of metal through electrochemical means, and this is uh, we call as anodic protection. It is not very difficult to understand. how and when anodic protection can work. What is anodic protection? You are you are rising the potential towards the anodic direction right. The potential is increased towards the anodic direction. If you increase the uh, over voltage, is not it right? This is what you do. What do you expect to happen in a normal metal? The corrosion will increase, right. But if the metal is passivating, if you rise the potential to the passive region, right, so what will happen to the corrosion rate? A decrease. In which case, what will be I car? I car equals to I p, right. So, by rising the potential to the passive region and you are moving the I car, which is going to be equal to I passivation. So, this is a simple principle, right. So, that means the system has to be passive ok. So, it is for the passive system. Only passive systems you can able to do this. The secondly I passivation has to be lower than I car otherwise no use if I car is going to be smaller than uh, I p it is not going to help you at all right. Let us look at the Evans diagram. Let us look at the Evans diagram for a passive system and see how the anodic protection system works right. So, let us draw the Evans diagram I suppose you can you can draw yourself and and see how it can be done. it. The system is not passivating right. What happens? You have a cathodic curve and you get the I car.
I can do it provided I raise the potential right. So, if I can raise this potential to this level, assume that I am going to have I take it to this level now ok. If I hold the metal in at this particular potential, the corresponding cathodic reaction and the corresponding anodic reaction rate right. If at this particular potential suppose I have a metal right, metal is immersed in a let us say in sulfuric acid somewhere right, say in sulfuric acid. from E car I am going to rise it by applying a positive potential and negative potential for this right. This is let us say a steel maybe. If I rise it to this look at this the E car um, has moved up, but what happened to the I car? Just come down to this value. So, corrosion current density has significantly reduced by rising the potential from E car up to the passive region. So, many interesting things are happening here right. Look at this now, if I were to bring down the same corrosion rate as I do for passive system for example, here. If I have to do it by cathodic protection, suppose I have to do it with the cathodic protection right. I can bring down the corrosion rate either by making it as anodic passive or I can bring down the potential and make it cathodic right. Both the cases I can bring down the corrosion rate, but what is the difference there yeah. I car is the same both cases. The current required for cathodic protection is less or more than anodic protection. The effective amount of current I need to supply to make it anodically protected which is more cathode is more anode is more. Now, the current is going in this direction right then log scale please see this assume that this is let us say 10 power minus 6 assume that is going to be 10 power 1 ok. Now, you tell me where you apply more current cathode right. So, you need only a few micro amperes here is generally you need only a few micro ampere per centimeter square. Here we need few milli amperes is not it you you see you have to move in the in the in the log scale then you understand that right this is higher value. So, cathodic protection generally requires higher current compared to the anodic protection right is one difference right. So, one difference is that is let us look at the difference between these two systems comparison right. Let us go to the anodic To reach the I passivation, do we have to surpass I critical in anodic protection? How do we do it? Yeah, okay. That that is a good question. Okay, uh, that that is that's a good question, and uh, and uh, I just come here. This is a very good question actually.
let us let us look at this process. You need to reach this place, how do I reach it? By making this as a cathode right, so you need a cathode A, this is the cathode. In cathodic protection, the counter electrode is a anode. In the anodic protection, the counter electrode is a cathode, right. So, how much current do I pass here? How much current do I pass here before I reach here? I need to pass a current which should be higher than the critical current density then only I can able to reach this, this, this cathode should supply enough current so that I reach here. But once I reach here, what happens? Maintaining. The maintaining that becomes easier. So, so it is a good question. So, the capacity of the, 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 the DC source, in fact I do not call it DC source, we call this as a potential stat, we will come to this later. This has to have the capacity to cross the critical current density. Otherwise, you will not able to achieve the anodic protection at all. But after reaching that place, then I think there is no problem, ok. You need less amount of current, ok. That is something we should be, you should, you should, you should, you should understand that. So, when you talk about anodic protection and cathodic protection, the one of the one of the first and foremost is the anodic protection is applicable only when the system is passivating, but the cathodic protection is applicable to almost all systems. We have no issue at all actually, ok. So, only for passive systems. I want to go one step further and say that I p has to be lower than I card. That is not sufficient, it has to be other criteria for that. It can be applied for any system. The other important thing is generally the current required is small. Current need is is high. Let us look at this a bit more uh, closely this diagram. I have say suppose I am holding the potential of the cathode somewhere here. I start moving little bit up and down. What happens? The metal will not corrode more. If in this case, if I do not hold the potential properly, then I end up corroding at a very high rate than the and the I car values. Right. So, the equipment required for that is called a potential stat, ok. You need a potential stat, ok. Here you need a potential stat. And it is normally expensive. A rectifier is sufficient. Now, the fourth point is you cannot make it immune, cannot make it immune to corrosion. K 
can can make it right can make the metal immune to corrosion that is because uh, cathodic protection is a, is a thermodynamically stable system, but anodic protection passivation is a kinetically hindrance. So, you cannot completely make the metal immune to corrosion, but that is not really required in actual service applications. Now, the question now is is anodic protection been used at all? It is now used actually and uh, because it took you know when you talk about a potential stat, the potential stat was first constructed by a person called Eddie Leno ok. It came much later as compared to reactive fire and other constant current sources. So, anodic protection is a relatively a new engineering concept that happened as compared to the cathodic protection system ok. But nevertheless it is used in fact it is used in sulfuric acid manufacturing plants. They use it for heat exchangers. It can be used for sulfuric acid tanks. is used for steel, used for stainless steels. It is used for uh, steel and stainless steels, but very limited applications compared to the cathode protection systems, but indeed used ok. So, um, this brings us to the end of discussion or you know lectures on uniform corrosion uh, and if you have many questions uh, any clarifications we can we can have we can discuss how much area can be covered by the iccp and sacrificial annual method what is the number and size of the anodes required in both the cases? Actually, uh, as I have been telling you, cathode production is a is an engineering. Now, when you talk about ICCP, generally, if you compare the structures, be it a pipeline or a tank or a ship hull, the anode is a point source. You can say it is infinite cathode and a very, very finite anode size. Now, that is where the location of the anode it matters. The current emanates from the point source and goes into the soil like a wave right like radially it goes and 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 enters the pipeline. And if we compare to sacrificial anodes, the number of anodes required for ICCP is less, but in the sacrificial you need more anodes because the driving voltage required or offered by the sacrificial anodes are very small ok. But there are cases where the anodes can run parallel to the pipelines. There are very, very isolated cases. For example, you have a pipeline going through a rocky terrain right. 
and the current cannot go through the rocks. So, what people do is they use what is called as horizontal anodes buried in a very thin anodes buried parallel to the pipelines ok. Because you keep it outside the current cannot penetrate to the rock actually there are certain segments people do it. Uh, otherwise, uh, the number of anodes uh, for ICCP are very very few and the size also very very very, very small actually. No questions ok. So, uh, then let us um, close the discussion um, today and um, we shall continue uh, the uh, the class that we can see when you can do that. Hmm. Can an inhibitor be added as alloying element? Inhibitors added as a? No, inhibitors are added to the electrolyte, added to the corrosive environment, right? But when you say alloy, I do not know whether you are using alloy as a general term, anything you mix together you call as alloy, right? Are you talking about mixed inhibitors? ok. Yeah, inhibitors can be added as a mixed. See, we, we discussed in the morning that it can be anodic inhibitor and be cathodic inhibitor. You can design an inhibitor which is having a mixed function of anodic and cathodic or you can add an uh, two inhibitors one is having an anodic character other is a cathodic character you can do that ok. So, that is done in many many uh, you know systems in a cooling water systems people add a combination of anodic inhibitor and a cathodic inhibitors ok and uh, you know that they are they are very common. In fact, that becomes more effective in this case. Uh, see zinc for example, people add zinc which is the cathodic inhibitor you know zinc compounds and the molybdate is an anodic inhibitor right. A system people add uh, you know zinc phosphates and and you have a molybdate you can add it to that actually ok. So, combination of that are, are, are quite common do that actually they are in fact very effective. And when you choose again inhibitors depend upon the temperatures sometimes the temperature of the system can be quite large in a cooling water systems the temperature of the system can go to 50 to 60 degrees Celsius. The stability of the inhibitors are also very important in boilers it becomes even more higher ok. There are so many variations in tailoring the inhibitors ok. Uh, yeah, I mean you are right we can have such variations. How does the functionality and mechanism of the inhibitors vary with the working conditions? See, the electrolyte would have a bearing on that on any of this, ok. Now, basically, the inhibitor they we have seen in the morning, right? Either they form an adsorbed layer on the surface, and how do they get adsorbed? either you will have a positive charge on the uh, on the you know on the molecule you know or you can have a negative charge. Here these charges are all what they are uh, I would say uh, the polar groups uh, you know kind of things. So, they get attached to the to the uh, you know to the metallic sides dip you know we can attach to a cathodic site if for example, the molecule is relatively having a positive character right and you have negative character it may get into an anodic site. So, both both are, are, are possible to do that and uh, in fact, there are certain uh, models you know people people you know they they, they, they look at uh, the density function theory and all this they use it to 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 first of all understand uh, second of all even to tailor a new molecule to do that ok. Um, and there are also people talk about adsorption isotherms like a Langmuir isotherm, Temkin isotherm you may be knowing 
where they look at the activation energies for adsorption, more is the activation energy for adsorption, I mean I mean uh, more is the free energy change for absorption and it, they absorb far better. So, these calculations that people make in order to characterize this um, inhibitors uh, when they tailor the uh, new inhibitors for various systems. Yeah, they, they, they depend on the on the metal, they also depend upon the electrolyte significantly. That. Anything? Okay, so thank you.